Peace and welcome to our Top 10 Koichi Sugiyama Themes in Video Games. Today is all about the mastermind behind the music of the Dragon Quest series. He does have other soundtracks to his credits, but he has worked on over 20 Dragon Quest games, so expect to see some entries. With no further delay, here are 10 of our favorites. First up, at number 10, we have Ocean Voyage from Dragon Quest V. First released on September 27th of 1992 for the Super Famicom, a Japanese exclusive. This was the first Dragon Quest game to not be released outside of Japan. It didn't see the light of day until February 17th of 2009 when it was released on the Nintendo DS. If you like classical music, have I got the composer for you. If there's any video game composer that can do classical music, then it's this guy right here. The Ocean Voyage theme is really relaxing. I think it's a good theme for morning time. Something about it makes me think about the sun rising and birds chirping. In our number 9 position, we have one from Dragon Quest VIII, titled, To a Vast World. Released in 2004 for the PlayStation 2, and by this time, chiptunes and compression weren't as much of an issue. You can allocate a lot more storage for the music when you're working on a PS2 with a 4GB DVD, rather than a 700 megabyte CD like the PlayStation 1, and I believe Koichi took advantage of it. After going through his entire catalog, I think Koichi Sugiyama is a master of relaxing music. His combination of instruments and melodies are quite peaceful. He does have action themes and battle themes as well, but his slower and relaxing tunes really stand out. Another thing I believe that makes him stand out is his consistency. He has hundreds if not thousands of pieces of music to choose from. There's a lot of good music and I don't think I heard one that I would just call flat out bad. Number 8 is from EVO, Search for Eden, a theme titled Birthplace of All Life. One of the non-Dragon Quest games on our list today, this is also one of the darker pieces. It has an eerie feel at first, and it almost reminds me of some Final Fantasy music. Released in 1992 for the Super Nintendo. There are some limitations on the hardware, but a good composer will find a way, even if it's not everything he wanted to do. I like the feel of the track. It may not be his typical style, but that just shows variety, and that's not a bad thing. This is one that I feel deserves a symphonic version, but I have yet to find it.
Lucky number seven first appeared in the first Dragon Quest game, the Overworld theme. First released in 1986, this theme was in the second game but went unused. However, in the third game it returned and I really like what he did with it. As always, with pretty much every piece he composed, it sounds even better when orchestrated. So here is the symphonic suite. It really gives insight to what he was going for on the original theme. That's one reason I like newer arrangements. You can get more in the head of the composer and understand what they were trying to do with the chip tune. Our number 6 position comes from the Japanese exclusive Monopoly, Game 2F. This is a 16-bit orchestra. If Koichi was born a hundred years earlier, I think we would be listening to him in the same way we listen to Bach or Mozart. This is how you spoil gamers. Give them one of the best composers and have him make music for 40 years. I would say it's kind of overkill for a game like Monopoly, but I'll never complain about developers wanting good music in their games. I would say quite the opposite. It would be nice if all developers cared as much as this. This piece is well beyond the average chiptune of 1993. Released only in Japan for the Super Famicom, Koichi went above and beyond. Number 5 is a theme from Dragon Quest IV, titled Gypsy's Journey. First released in 1990 for the 8-bit Nintendo Famicom, with its original title being Dragon Quest IV Chapters of the Chosen. Koichi did a wonderful job of mastering the NES sound chip and this one is a good example. It's an easy listen with a groovy little tune. Titled Gypsy's Journey, you can feel the journey in the theme. Through the desert, through the mountains, the forest, through a blizzard. This theme has it all. It's a perfect piece for a journey. Unlucky number four is from Mystery Dungeon, Shira and the Wanderer, the main theme. A theme with a Japanese feel, from the Hyoshigi to the Shakuhachi. I really like the Asian feel of the track, it's unlike most of his Dragon Quest music, which tends to be more of the classical variety. About halfway through the track, it kind of transitions into more of an orchestrated version of the melody, and I think that's when it really takes off. 
You can find this theme on a few different Mystery Dungeon games, but it debuted on the 1995 Super Famicom game. And one of my favorite versions is from the Nintendo DS. It's really close to the same, but a little bit cleaner overall. On the DS, it's not his arrangement, but it's still his composition. In our bronze position today, we have a theme from Dragon Quest VII, known as Tula Dance, or Sacrifice Dance. One of my all-time favorite themes by Koichi Sugiyama. This piece was also on Dragon Quest VII for the 3DS, and it's the same melody, but there's some added depth that really takes it to the next level. I believe this is one of his more underrated pieces. Released on the PlayStation 1, this was the first time Koichi Sugiyama didn't have to worry about compression and storage space. He had his handcuffs removed and could truly explore. Imagine your game going from 5 megabytes to 700 megabytes. The difference is a chiptune versus a CD quality theme. It's really no contest, especially when you have one of the great classical composers of our generation. This is Mike Tyson without the gloves. Our silver spot first appears in Dragon Quest III, Heavenly Flight. From the original 8-bit Nintendo, you can hear some limitations in the hardware, but the melody itself is still really good. A perfect example would be the rendition from Dragon Quest VIII. This is one where I would go with the newer rendition because the original was limited to the technology of 1988 when it was released. I think this theme is a perfect one to be orchestrated. It has all of the elements of a good classical piece. I like everything about it. It's moving and carries some weight. Like a lot of the themes in the Dragon Quest series, you can find it in multiple games. One version I really enjoy is from Dragon Quest XI. Our top spot today, of course, comes from Dragon Quest. It's the Overture. An 
epic theme that has stood the test of time. You can find this on the first Dragon Quest game back in 1986, and you can find it on basically every game since then. An iconic theme that was featured during the opening ceremony of the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, Japan. People across the globe tuned in to watch some track and field and were met with the Dragon Quest Overture. I can only imagine what Koichi was feeling when he heard a piece of music that he wrote be featured in the Olympics. He had a long and successful career before this moment, composing around 50 video games and around 2,000 television commercials. But this is next level. Imagine writing a piece and nearly 35 years later, this happens. This is far from the average video game theme. So there you have our top 10 Koichi Sugiyama themes. The man can compose classical pieces with the best of them. I am sure basically everyone will have a different top 10 on this one, so let us know your top 10 in the comments. For our next top 10, check the pinned comment and let us know what you think. Last but not least, shout out to gold level patrons Bersona and Quantum X. I am ICC, thanks for watching, peace.